No, Raphael and um, Greg are on their way. Let's see who makes it in first. Timothy Constantine. What a great name. Constantine. Glenn. Alonzo. Awesome. Fantastic. Welcome, everybody. Glad that morning. you all have joined us today. Morning, morning. Coming in. Pit folks are coming in. So we'll um, let's see who else is here. Got a bunch of folks. I'm going to see if anybody in particular we know. Wow, there's a lot of people coming in. I can't scroll that fast. <laughs> Cannot scroll that fast. All right, all right, all right. We'll get cooking in just a minute. We're waiting on uh, a couple of our superheroes. So Alex, Alex is here. Thank um, you. Hi, Great how you doing? Now? Here. Let's see who who else has come. We, we need a uh, we need the doctor. I do. We need the doctor, and we need Greg. There he is. You cannot turn on people's cameras. All right. Then I'll make sure I make him a co-host. There you go. Morning, Greg Flock. All right. So we will just make it work. All right. Welcome, everybody. Did everybody have a, a great month or specifically a great weekend? I may or may not have a Kentucky Derby fan here. Wow. Very Man, nice. Look at that. That's a coffee mug. Giddy up. Yes, we were <laughs> at the Kentucky Derby. Yes, we were. And yes, I did. If that's the question, but bam, that's the question. Wow. Wait, wait, let me, does it, does it show up right? Is it, it does. It looks good. Yeah. All right. Yeah. There you go. That is the winning ticket. $2 on 21. And I have, ladies and gentlemen, you did not expect this today, but I'm going to tell you how you can win at every single horse race. Now that I am an expert in the Kentucky Derby, I promise you this works without fail every single time. What the way that you can pick a derby winner, you know, you will always have a derby winner if you bet on every single horse. That's what I did. <laughs> we did. I literally did that because I wanted to be able to say I had a derby winner yeah. and I could brag about it here. So there you, so have you spent $42, you won like what, 160, 160. That's right. That's right. And Raphael, the good doctors in the house. Good to see everybody. All right. Well, I'm gonna fire. You might have to up. turn his camera on. Well, I, I did. I, I I got it. I turned him on okay. the best I can. He's got to turn his own camera on. He does, <laughs> and he can. He will. Where is the man? Where is he? Ralph, are you good? I'm good. I'm I'm coming in. You're coming in. I'm coming in, man. I'm coming in. Come on in. All right. Let's. Uh, let me see if I can get this bad boy to work, and we'll get this thing cooking. Welcome, everybody. We have. That's wild. We don't have as many today as I thought we would. There's 83, 82 so far. All right. There's not well, there's 90 now. <laughs> All right. Well, that's spoke too soon. All right. Fantastic. Well, we are glad that you guys decided to join us today. Let's make sure everything's working the way it's supposed to. We will be talking about proposals that win today with Greg Clark. You're going to take the lead today, my man. Yes, sir. All righty. All righty. All righty. All right, and so all right, all uh, right. we're all here because there's 1.5 trillion. I don't know what to do that. We, we do billion this way, right? Rafael Moreira. It'll be two hands. <laughs> you got to do two hands. It's, it's trillion. You need like all the hands and feet and everything. All right. But uh, we are in Q3. All this money has to be spent by 930. Why is that, Sally White? Because that's when the end of the fiscal year for the government. That is correct. And if you want to win, you better be doing it right now. You better be getting in. Uh, if you haven't started already, if you haven't started already, you're behind the competition by six months already. So there right, you we'll have help it. you. We'll help you catch up. We'll help you get there. We will be talking about that. Uh, participating is easy in this bad boy. You can chat with us. You can raise your hand and you can ask questions. We prefer if you put the questions in the Q&A so we can keep up with them. Because once we start dealing with the chat and over 100 people, it winds up getting insane. So we want to make sure that uh, you can do that. If you've been living under a rock and you have no idea what in the world Zoom is, I can't imagine that's the case. But if you would like to learn more about Zoom, you can go up to the top and click and you can make a side by side or make us see what you want to see. We will have links in the handouts uh, in the chat. So you'll be able to get to the winnable opportunity matrix, our, our capabilities and propaganda. 
Uh, we do need your updated one, Rafael Marrero. I don't have your re procurement readiness, but you can pop that in there too. 90 yes, second challenge is how we, is, is, is the foundation. This 90 second challenge, we're going to be talking about this. I won't be reviewing it like sometimes I do, but we'll be talking about it because 98%, ladies and gentlemen, will never hit the street for you to bid on, which means you need to have another way to be able to get to these people. And you might be saying, what are you talking about? We watch Sam.gov all the time. And Sally, you have an experience with Sam.gov. You just did it last week or something, right? I absolutely did. It was uh, Sam.gov hell, but you helped me through it. I got one of those <laughs> notices that said I was expiring and it went through all kinds of things, which is why um, I'm so pleased to be part of the ISI uh, Sam.bid team. Yeah, Sam.bid. Yeah. We'll talk a little bit about that too. Yes, and you're not going to believe this, Raphael. You ready for this? Yes, sir. Steady yourself. Steady yourself. Oh. 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 <laughs> oh. You're looking sexy, man. For those, for those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, my team here at ISI Federal uh, had a mutiny and ordered a photographer to come to my house because I was using my Richie Cunningham picture from <laughs> high school. 13 years ago. Yeah, from high school. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. Thanks, Ralph. Appreciate that. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm Dave Lowe, the updated Dave Lowe. Now, uh, like, I'm sexified like Rafa. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we do data, we do marketing, we do business development. That's why we're here. We, since 2009, we've been working on this. We have over a half a billion in direct and indirect sales with our clients, helping them do that. Um, in this instance, we're gonna, we'll talk a little bit about market essentials and getting you smart about the market. Uh, we help you reach stakeholders with GovBrief. Uh, that goes out to program managers as well as, as buyers because we have 1.2 million federal contacts and we can go after them using GovBrief as the source. In fact, we will be using GovBrief to reach folks like you. We're gonna be doing the JV and teaming. Both of these are happening on May 12th. Uh, one of those is with Jason Moy with Cordatus and the other one is with Brian Hebel and his crew dealing with uh, CPARS training for government corps and contract officials and program managers. That is because he educates the govies on how to uh, do CPARS and he also educates folks like, folks like you. Uh, and we will be talking about this a little bit today too. Uh, Sally mentioned it, SAM.bid with AMP is an advanced monitoring platform. We'll get you to the other 98% because only 2% hints SAM.gov. And that's why we're here. And you can go see that at SAM.gov. And we will talk, I'm saying SAM.gov, SAM.bid. <laughs> Jeez, I can't even remember my own stuff. If you want to monitor both SAM.gov and GSA eBuy, we do that as well. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about that. Quick Fuse is what we use to monitor GSA eBuy. You can only do this if you have a GSA contract. And Greg Clark can talk about that a little bit when he's talking about contracting yeah. and what he does. You get a 30-day test drive for free. So if you have a GSA contract, go to QUIKFUSE.com. And guess what? If you stay for a year and you don't sell five times what you pay for, uh, for, for Quick Fuse, which is like a grant, then you will get 100% of your money back. So there you amazing, have it. Amazing, Dave. I mean, that no is amazing. It's incredible. Money. I can't believe it. And guess how many times we've had to refund the money? Zero. Zero, baby. That's right. All right. We got the good doctor in the house. And for that, I need to change my glasses to my sexy blue glasses like he's got. He's even got them on. Yes, Dr. sir. Dr. Rafael Marrero, tell us about uh, your, your company. Well, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, uh, Rafael Marrero and Company is a uh, specialized business to government management consultancy. We focus on procurement readiness, which is the most important part of the equation when you're launching your, your uh, business in the federal space. And for those that are already in the federal space and are looking to increase their probabilities of winning or their P win, uh, it's all about positioning and proper branding also and getting the right message out when you're doing your, your door knocking, right? When you're not knocking on doors and building relationships. So we work on your contractor branding. That's something we're not just a, a regular communications firm. We specialize in government contracting. So we understand the nomenclature. We understand the, the lingo. We speak government. Uh, we also help with uh, government socioeconomic certifications. So if, you, if you're looking for an 8A hub zone, service disabled, 
DOT certification, which is big a federal deal. program. Yep. Big deal, Rafa. Yep. That's right. Especially with the uh, transportation uh, uh, plans. And uh, we also help with SBA 7A and 504 loans. So for those of you looking for any type of assistance in standing up your federal practice or supercharging it and taking it to the next level, give us a call. You'll see the contact information for one of our, uh, for our business development manager, Jonathan Serrano, who should be on this call shortly. Awesome. As always, you, you're, you're going to get tell us a little bit about uh, looking like you deserve to be there, right, Rafa? That's right. We'll talk about that in a minute. Fantastic. And Greg, you're going to be taking the lead today, but tell us about GSA schedules because we're going to be talking more about how, what you do every day, and I need to change my glasses back for you. <laughs> there he is. So, so we, uh, uh, we've we been in business since 1995. Three of us formed the company in 95. There's six of us now, and uh, we formed to help companies um, prepare their responses to RFPs, uh, prepare their proposals in response to RFPs. We've um, closing out on 400 contracts. We've helped our clients win with a combined value that is in excess of 2 billion. Um, and then about 15 years ago, we started helping companies get on the GSA schedule where we helped a company win a contract with an agency and they did a great job and the agency uh, loved what they did and said, you know what, we'd like to do more work with you. And if you were on the GSA schedule, we could do that. Um, we, we wouldn't have to compete it. We could just award you work. So. They came back to us and said, I don't know what the GSC schedule is, but we have to be on it. So we started helping companies go through that process of getting on because it's in line with what we've been doing every day since 95. An agency has issued a package and a response needs to be prepared. So we started helping existing clients with that as a courtesy, and it's grown to where we're uh, up over 430 companies that we've helped get approved, including a new one last Friday. Awesome. That is awesome. And we got to couple of questions that are popping into um, into the chat and, and Jorg is asking. In the, in the Q&A. Yeah, pop, do me a favor, pop those in the Q&A because they're going to get lost in the chat because right now we're going to tell everybody what to do with that chat because Sally is a, I added something for you. You're the Uber connector, master networker. Huh? Raphael? Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what Thank the you heck? so you like this? Fantastic. So, yes. and, uh, looking, looking, looking sharp, Sally White. <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. So what I do, and I put my information in the chat, um, I basically help people sort of align their business strategy with their marketing strategy. There's a lot of things in the marketing strategy ecosystem branding, which uh, Raphael and his team do very well, as well as um, aligning your website with LinkedIn and your other social platforms, looking at your buyer personas. So there's a whole Marat of things that we support in that, including if you need money, which Peter will talk about, Peter Timbus. Um, so I basically connect you and help you also connect with um, executives, you know, Rear Admiral Generals for the Navy and executives and that and the like. So excited okay. to connect with you and I'd love to have a chat. Um, and what do you want to tell people about uh, making people know what they're doing here today? What can they do today to help network? So what they can do today, very, very important, is put your information in the chat. So oh, just that. like that. Right See? there. So I, I basically said who I am. I put my little elevator pitch, my brand. I included my LinkedIn page. You can link in with me, my website. And I have a Calendly. So you can schedule a free, 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 15-minute appointment. And I'll do sort of an assessment of your website, LinkedIn, and give you all kinds of suggestions on how you can improve. Love it, love it, love it. Great job, Sally. Sally and I are going to team up and do a... A, a, an infrastructure briefing in the not too distant future. We're, we're lining that up. We wanted to get it super solid. So we understood what was happening and she's done a great job at, at uh, assembling that. So that's coming. And we also have Peter Timbus is, is around now. Not only does Peter, this is, this is why I love Peter. Peter knows this world, just like Raphael knows the world. Peter knows this world. If you've gone to a bank and asked for funding, if you're a million dollar company and want a $10 million contract and you ask for funding, what are they going to say, Peter Timbus? They're going to say probably no based <laughs> on bad performance and you're, you don't qualify for the bank finance. Well, let me just state, I feel a little underdressed this morning with my brown glasses. <laughs> <laughs> You got to get some, man. I'm going to have to look in and get some blue glasses. Well, good, mo good morning, everybody. My name is Peter Timbus. I'm president of TFN Lending. 
I've been doing this since uh, 1991. And we do specialize in financing government contractors, commercial contractors. But the real difference with us is we get results for people. We'll fund your opportunity. We will look to your opportunity and establish lines of credit based upon what we feel you need to grow that business rather than the banks looking at your financial statements and setting up a line of credit. So I call it banks lend in the rear view mirror. We look out the windshield and we'll finance that opportunity. So whether you're a, a brand new company, a small company, a big company, we're there to support your growth. And I always say to people, if you're growing your business, you should be with an alternative lender like us. When you finish growing your company and then want to manage your company, that's where you get into the, the bank financing. The second yep. uh, other piece that we can help you tremendously with is a letter of financial support. Very important. So, what is that? So once you engage ISI and you get all these opportunities and work with other members of the team, a financial letter of support, we will provide that to you that you will send in with your proposal that will say to the government, should you pick us, we have the financial resources to perform on that contract. Very, very important. And it's becoming more prevalent. Mm -hmm. I think this past week, we issued a dozen of those. So very important to get established with a firm like us. So in that bidding process, if that comes up, you are, you are in our system. Love it. And it, so we're talking a little bit about contracting officers and what they're looking for uh, and, and part of the proposal process. And they are risk averse, aren't they, Peter? Correct. They're, mm -hmm. And what we want to do is we want to minimize the amount of risk. And if you have that letter of support, it's something that says, hey, we, we can, you know, if you give us a $10 million contract, even though we're only a million dollar company, we can do it. And you've done that multiple times. I'm only quoting you on that because that's what you've told me in the past. You want to try to remove as many obstacles in that bidding process as you possibly can. You got that right. And uh, Brian Hebel's not with us today. If, if you're interested in doing business uh, with the government, he's, he is always a great resource. He's got, he's, was, he was inside. Everybody else is talking here is on the outside uh, and, and, done, and done incredible work. But this guy's on the inside. And he does trainings as well. So you can do, go to acquisitionhelp.com and see him. He also wrote a book like Rafael Marrero did. And he's got a second one coming out, apparently. Market and sell to U.S. government. That's, uh, that's, that's Brian's. A little bit about this session. It's always free. And we have oh, it's over 3,500 as of, as of yesterday. Uh, it's every second Tuesday. We dialogue. We give you access to folks that, you're, that you see here. And everybody here is going to tell you the same thing. If you think it's fast, easy, and cheap to be here, is it, ladies and gentlemen? No. No. This is not the place to be if you want. If you want the quick hit, you do one of these things at the Kentucky Derby, and you bet on a long shot. That's what you do. <laughs> <laughs> There's no silver bullets. We get real about how things work, and we'll talk a little bit about the tools that we use and have developed that you can use today to be able to help you get ahead. And we will get real about how things work, talk about marketing tools. If you missed a session, you can go to YouTube and you can find us there. And um, a lot of times you'll see that under the GovBrief banner. Dave, do you and really have your Santa hat still on? I mean, really? Is my Santa hat still? Yeah, that you, was you from need December. To like, I know, we need your better picture. That's embarrassing. That's Come embarrassing. On, that, I told you, I just I mean, got seriously. the updated. I just got that thing. Get it together. Yeah, all right. That's the... <laughs> Whatever. You, you, need, you need an Uncle you. Sam. You need an Uncle Sam hat right now. You need to start. I do. That yeah. was from or Cinco de Mayo. If you missed, Cinco de Mayo if you missed December session, Rafa and <laughs> Sally, like Jimmy and Chris, you need a All right. Sombrero. So if I'm you're here, you. I'm with you, dude. What's that? I'm yeah. I'm with you. You're showing old old. Uh, I know. Older I, uh, sessions that we did. I know. It's 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 history. Yeah. This is now. Yeah. All right. So um, if you're here after active opportunities, that's what we're gonna be talking about. Opportunities with RFPs, RFQs and RFIs uh, and reaching stakeholders, including the buyers and contracting officers and specialists. That's what we're gonna be talking about mostly today. 
So um, a quick <clears throat> disclaimer, you can read this for all yourself, but if you're from the government, this enables you to talk back and forth with us. It doesn't guarantee an award. You believe that, Craig Clark? This does not guarantee an award. It does not. It does not. And if you want to engage as government personnel, you're not obligated to buy from anybody that's here. All right, so why in the world did you guys decide to join us today? Are you new to federal contracting? You have a federal contract as a sub and want to grow and have it as a prime? You have a federal prime contract and you want to grow? Or some crazy fool sent you an email? There you go. Now, while we're getting into this, while you're answering that, if you're new to the federal market, because we usually have about half the folks that are coming that are new, this is a new experience. It also doesn't operate the same way, does it, Rafael Marrero, it, as, as commercial, does it? Absolutely not. Different Therefore, ball game, different rules. That's right, different rules, which means if it's different, you're going to have to have a different approach in order to be able to win. And here's here, absolute truth. When I got into this world, I, I came from telecom into this world, and I didn't know anybody. I, I had sold millions, tens of millions of dollars in the, in the telecom market, and I got into federal, and I knew zero people, zero. All the same companies, by the way, all the primes are all the same companies. That's totally different game. So if this is true, you cannot play this game the same way that you do to B2B or B2C. You cannot do it. If you do it, you will fail categorically and that's why over 90 percent of companies that get into this world fail because they play the, they want the game to be played the way they want to play it and it doesn't work like that so there you go all right let's see what we got here we got oh it's 49 percent, and we're going to end this in three two polls are painless by the way three two one and boom all right here we go guys take a look 50 percent right on the money Wow. 50% are brand new and 13% are calling me names. All right. 21% <laughs> calling me names. 13 <laughs> people calling me names. Love it. All right. So, so if you're here, we want to know what it, what's the game that we're going to play? How do you play it? And how do you play it to win? Because if you're going to play the game, you want to play to win, right? Greg Clark. Absolutely. Absolutely. Why else play? Here's the deal. The game isn't played by what you want. It's played the way they want and the way they want it. So if you want to get in the game, it goes like this. You take yourself out of this and talk about what they want and the way that they want it and when they want it. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. We do have session handouts. We have the winnable opportunity matrix. I'm going to run that through with you real quick. It's a document that we de developed a long time ago. But it's all about building relationships with the stakeholders. The stakeholders are on the right-hand side of that. And each one of these stakeholders have a different ways of way, how they do their business. They have different roles and jobs. They have different reasons for what they do. And as a result, different roles, different needs, different buying motives, and different patterns. And our job is to drive them into the green. And if you don't know them, you, they're, they're not in the green. I promise you that. First, we have the contracting officer, then we have the program manager, and with some questions from York. I'm hoping I'm saying that right. It, it could be different um, for York. Uh, technical representative or COTAR or CORE. That's another uh, one of the other folks. And then we have the administrators. They're the top dogs of the organizations. And there's multiple layers of top dogs. If you've ever seen the titles on business cards or in their offices, it gets insane. Deputy undersecretary to the assistant. <laughs> so it's crazy. Whoa. Whoa. So there you go. It, it, this is pretty simple though, Rafa. And it, 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 go, it looks like this. If you're in the green, they kind of, they favor you, right? So if you think about it, you're okay. They met you. You didn't spit while you talked. You didn't step on their shoes in the elevator. You're an all right kind of guy, <laughs> right? Or, and they kind of like you, Sally. So here you, you met with them and they, hey, I, you know, got, got together with Sally. She was pretty cool. And, um, and as a result, they kind of like you. And then other people like Greg Clark, they like Greg Clark a lot because he responds exactly the way they want to see it. <laughs> so they kind of like him a lot. And then you, all, then you get to the fours and that's your coaches, right? And, uh, and they're the type of people that help you kind of navigate the process within their agency. And then a champion, and they're the ones that are carrying the flag up the hill, your flag up the hill. Very rare to have those. And coaches and you don't need coaches and champions in order to win, do you, Sally? Nope. They just need to be in the green or 
If they're really heavy for your competitor, kind of move them up towards the green. This is modified for Miller Hyman's Strategic Selling. If you haven't read that book, great book, great book. Or if hadn't attended a course, we attended a course years ago in the 90s, showing my age, why I have the updated picture, Raphael. Um, <laughs> notice that there is no middle. A lot of times when we're in sales or we're in our business development mindset, it's like, okay, when it hits the street, it's altogether fair. Right, Greg Clark? It's altogether fair. There's nothing fair about it. There's, ain't nothing fair about this world. So, um, so with that, there is no middle, which means that if you don't know who they are, they're automatically in the red. Because if they don't know who you are, they will not buy from you. So part of it is a marketing message to get your brand out there. Tally was talking about it, getting your brand together, making sure you look like you belong. Raphael's going to talk about that in a minute. And guess what? If you flip this upside down, it looks like they favor the competition. You know why? Because the competition's already winning and you're not. So you want to be able to understand, just get it in your head that the, they're already buying from somebody that they know. And the operation here is the move the buyers into the green. We're going to be talking about buyers mostly today, but we will we do talk about program managers and reaching program managers. But today we're going to be talking about buyers. So if we want to talk about buyers, who are these people? We talked about it a little bit earlier. First of all, they're busy or they think they are. No offense <laughs> to the people that happen to be here, <laughs> right? But a lot of times they are really busy. They got a lot of paper to move, right? And they're, Raphael, are they going to teach you how to do business with them? It's not absolutely, it's absolutely not in their purview, nor in their job description. That, and they're going to make it abundantly clear that it isn't. So <laughs> <laughs> yes, they will. You might and as we well talk. just walk yourself out of the room if you do. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah, you can pick yourself up by the collar, right? Woo. That's right. That's right. So, and we mentioned this earlier, the risk averse and they don't like new things. Both of those tie in together. And guess what? If you're new to the federal government, they don't like you. No offense. They don't know you, but they don't like you because you're new. So I mentioned this earlier, they're experts in moving paper. This does not mitigate the fact that they're really important people because they're the ones that are going to decide whether it gets set aside for a socioeconomic set aside, right, Raphael? And one of those could be, give me one of them. 8A. 8A. It could be a veteran-owned, women-owned, EDWSB. And all of those could be set aside, right? They're right. going to determine whether it's set aside for that. They're going to select the purchasing mechanism. It is going to go through mm -hmm. a GSA contract. Greg Clark, what in the world is a GSA contract? One more time. It's a contract vehicle where uh, pre-approved and pre-negotiated pricing uh, are, are used uh, by agencies to purchase more than $30 billion in products and services every year. Every single year. So they can choose whether it goes GSA or not. And guess what? A lot of them hate GSA, just about as much as we are not big fans of sam.gov, right, right, Sally? Correct. <laughs> so I'm serious because if you, there's other contract mechanisms that are out there that agencies put out because they don't want to have to deal with GSA or any other agency for that matter. So they select the purchasing mechanisms. They create the document that says, I'm going to buy from you. And they want the fastest way to purchase. Why in the world would they want the fastest way to purchase? Because they got a freak ton of paper on their desk, right, Sally? That's absolutely correct. And if you're thinking about this, if it's not easy for them to purchase from you and you don't have a contract vehicle or great past performance, we'll talk a little bit about that, seeding that for you there, Rob, Greg. But easy is good, so we want to make it easy for them and we want to value them. Don't think that just because they don't understand how great of an architect you are or how great of a software mechanism you have to be able to stop all the cybersecurity threats that are out there, all those technical things, they don't care. They care about these things, which is why you need to be able to connect with people with the way that they want to be connected to. And Sally White, tell us how you go about some of that connecting. You do a lot of these shows. So how do you do it? How do you connect with people? And, 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 how, and what do you do? Absolutely. So we're, we're entering a phase where more conferences are live. They were in virtual over the last two years. So it's really important as we go to live conferences or virtual conferences. I was just one this morning with the Navy um, to have our LinkedIn page up to date 
our beautiful picture, um, have it aligned with our website, make sure our branding's consistent, whether ever, any social media you use, LinkedIn happens to be prevalent in sort of our industry. It's also really important to be able to connect with executives and decision makers and influencers. And how you do that is you go to conferences and if you see someone speaking, you can reach out and say, hey, I see we have several people connected. Or if you're not connected, you can say, I'm so excited to hear you speak at Navy Gold Coast, looking forward to connecting and they will connect with you. And so it's really important to look at your entire branding model, your LinkedIn, your website, your package, and make sure that it's aligned with your products and services and that they're listed eloquently and clearly on your website. Otherwise, people can't get a hold of you to buy from you. Yep. And that's, that's fantastic. So Sa that is Sally's wheelhouse. And if you would like to talk more to Sally about that, let me find it. I'm going to find it, Sally. Here we go. <laughs> Help me get my LinkedIn in shape. Help me with my engagement message, my web presence or something specific. Please call me, reach out to Sally. Sally is awesome at being able to do top-down selling as well, being able to connect with senior decision makers and then, and then get awareness for that. Right, Sal? That's absolutely true. And we're doing some cool things with putting QR codes on the LinkedIn pages so people can actually go directly to your website. So it's, we're doing some real innovative things. Thank you. Absolutely. Love it. So while you're doing that, I'm going to answer a couple of questions. Um, and, and is it your, is that right? Am I saying that right, Jorg? How can you help us talk to program managers? You know, the roadblocks are big when you talk to the CEO or the small business liaison, right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's Any ideas? Here. I have great ideas. Uh, we use GovBrief. We identify, yeah. <laughs> we identify people. We create a message that resonates with a, with a segment. And we don't keep it broad and talk about the IT challenges. We don't do that. We go down into... Let's do something on zero trust. Let's talk about let's talk about ro robotic process automation. We talk about those things because if you, either you care about those things or you don't. And robotic process automation gets you under it gets you in a side door at, or zero zero trust talking about you know cyber altogether. So you have all the what we want to do is identify a need and and you know that you can fill that need and then you're going to talk about best practices to those folks. It's very similar to what we're doing right here. You came here because you wanted to learn something about the federal government and figure out if any of these knuckleheads know anything, right? That's why we're here. So the idea is, hey, let's, let's figure out how we can drive a competitive wedge, market to them, and then start driving a competitive wedge using what your knowledge is. And that's how we do it. Your, we can talk about that uh, again later. Um, from an anonymous attendee, very great, great question. How do you compare to GovWin, who also promotes access to the other 2% out of, outside of FBO? Fantastic question. Uh, GovWin, great. GovWin's great. If you're looking at, at, at things that are up more than $500,000 that are recompetes, that's the place that you go. Or if it's already hit a forecast, that's the place to go because they dig down into all those things and they, they release that information. And they charge a pretty decent price, don't they, Rafa? <laughs> I command a, a healthy one. <laughs> a healthy, a healthy price. Uh, so, and they do, a, and they do good work. That, so, I, I would say that if that's your market and you want to, and, and it's in this proposal side of things, leans much more to that. Greg is that is that we're talking about leaning much more to hey, developing a proposal that really that really rocks. That's where you would go. The, the, the tools that we have and we developed go behind that, going looking at the ones for that are, some of those are micro purchases on credit cards that they can do over and over. And other ones are falling under simplified acquisitions that aren't going to hit any forecast. They're never going to be published anywhere. And we have a process to be able, it's not easy. You still got to do the work, right, Greg? You still yeah, got to do work. 100%. So, so, so what, we, what we want to do though, is, and we'll talk about that in a minute. So that's uh, that is the difference between us and and Govwin. Govwin is a good company. They've been doing it for a long time. So uh, and I recommend them regularly to, to clients. All right, Sally, we got. I think there's 25 people that that are wow. going to be. You, you, you got to talk to 25 people out of this. Wonderful. Looking after this to thing. It. Thank you. So so uh, good doctor. Let me change. Everybody, glass wait, wait. changes. Glasses wait, change. Wait wait wait. Okay, hold on. <laughs> Oh, you can't start, Ralph. There you go. Wait. <laughs> Let me get my blue steel pose on. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. 
Um, so, so Rafa, tell us, tell us what you, you've been in this world for a long time. Give them a, give a little, a little bit more about what you've done in the past in procurement. Cause that's where you came from, right? Sure. Sure. So I I've worked in the uh, large enterprise space. I've worked with, uh, Historically speaking, I've worked with thousands of vendors, suppliers in, in all realms. Maybe one up, of these, maybe the company that made this thing. There you have it, right? I headed up procurement for a Fortune 500 company and uh, <laughs> I ran the supplier diversity and uh, subcontracting, contingent employment, everything that touches the um, enterprise resources. So I had well over a billion dollars a year in purchasing every year in 1.5 actually in indirect and, di and direct category spends. Um, and so what we did, my organization was chartered with selecting the best in class. So we looked at vendors of, pro of, pro of products and services. And I can tell you from that vantage point, when I sat across the room from someone, I knew exactly when someone was new to the game, when they fit the bill, when they were trying to, to be what they were not. And so we understand how you must look on paper on the, you know, on the web, on your website, on your business cards, and what you need to say and do to look the part and also dress for the part, because it's important. You need to check off all the right boxes and you need to come across strong in your image and in your messaging so that you create a lasting first impression. And that's exactly what my firm does, right? We have in-house, we don't outsource it. We don't have some guy that does this for us on the side. We have full-time dedicated staff members that do design, creative, video, photography, everything, everything, we put it together. So it's, you know, if you're looking for a capability statement that addresses the six C's, right? That addresses the important elements, the essential elements of information, we can put one together for you that is of high impact and value. For example, we can do double-sided one pager or two pagers, right? Typically we do the success sheet on the past, we do, the past performance and other elements on the past, but you need to have your essential elements of information, a capabilities narrative, elevator pitch of what you do, right? And then double-sided in PDF, high resolution. Dave, it must never ever be more than a megabyte. And that's the biggest mistake people make, mm -hmm. right? They send out 10 megabyte files, or I've seen 24 megabyte files. Yep. God help us, right? And then what you do is- they, And why, why is that, Rafa? Why, why don't you want to put a, put a larger- Well, there? because they're going to hit, this is me, you know, deleting, right? So it's going to go right to your, you're going to choke up the uh, bandwidth and probably be labeled a spam. And you don't want to do that, right? You want to have a one megabyte file that is, has your company name dot capability statement dot PDF. Mm -hmm. You want it to be indexable, right? Searchable. And mm -hmm. you want to have all the key elements mapped to the information. And here is something very important, guys. It has to hold water. You cannot just put anything on paper that cannot be verified or later substantiated. So your capabilities narrative, think of it as encapsulating exactly the who, what, when, where, how, and why. The codes, including your, your CAGE code, your NAICS codes, your North American Industrial Classification System. What is it that you do? What are the areas that you commonly serve, right? According to your, to your tax uh, filings. And then, your product supply codes are very, very important, more so than even the NAICS codes because federal buyers use PSC codes. Within a NAICS code, there can be two or three PSC codes. So you need to have the At product least. supply codes that make sense. Also, what, who are your customers? Who are you currently serving? If I'm a buyer and I've done this in the past, if, if, <clears> if I'm considering you to buy, from, to buy from you, if I'm considering buying from you, I'm gonna see who have you served, right? Uh, have you served a company or an institution of my size? And, and is, is, is the scope of work within my wheelhouse? All those things are important because I'm going to see, I, I want to, I want to feel the warm and fuzzies. I want to make sure that I understand that you can deliver for me, that you're yep. not overselling. Right. And then who are, you know, what contracts can we use? What contracts have you performed on? Do you have any relevant past performance that is directly relevant to what I'm asking you for? So if you're a brain surgeon and I'm buying rocket ships, please don't come tell me that you're a great brain surgeon. I don't want to hear that. I want to hear you're great at doing rocket ships or, or, or jet propeller system, whatever it is that I'm buying, but make sure that you're selling to the right audience. And then your core competencies and also your contact info, right? 
never oversell. And this document here, Dave, is the single most important piece of government marketing. And people have no idea just how important this is. This is your corporate resume. Yep. Right. And you, with it, you're not going to get a contract, but guess what? You're probably going to get a call or you're going to get the interview. Think of it you're as you're going to at least look like you belong. That's exactly. That's the exactly. whole reason for doing it. That's right. And that's right. If you don't look like you mentioned it earlier, you've seen it, you sat on the other side of the table mm -hmm. and you've seen people who don't belong. That's and right. you know it just like that. And Dave, and, one, one very important point. Sorry to cut you off there, but sorry. you know, the SBA has rules, very specific rules in terms of how to use their icons and logos. And there is a uh, there is for official use only policy that governs 8A and other SBA certifications. You need to know which ones you're using. You cannot misrepresent your small business concern certifications. So good it's catch. important to get guidance from professionals that do this on a day in day out basis. That's good, what we're good here catch. to do. Yep. And speaking of guidance, I think you can provide guidance. How much does it talk to talk? How much does it cost to talk to Jonathan about this stuff? Zero. Nothing. It's, uh, nothing. Not a zip. Zip. So what do you need? You need him to pimp your Sam. You, you do that too. We didn't talk yeah. about pimping your Sam, but uh, need a rocket capability statement. Want to talk about social economic certifications or something else? Please call me. Let us know. And we'll get to some questions while we're here. You know, Dave, uh, on, on the Sam thing, while people are doing that, it's very important for them to understand that optimizing and tuning up the content in their Sam registration is very important because it's not just, hey, I'm registered. Well, because think of this as this is the government's first impression of you as a contractor or a potential yep. vendor, right? So the information there, including your past performance, including the URLs that you embed in your profile, where they're going to land, how you're going to look, all these components are very important in painting the right picture. So it's important that your SAM registration look its finest and we can help you with that. We can help you tune it up and maintain it for you so that you don't uh, you don't fall out of compliance and you're not uh, uh, you know expired. Love okay? it, love it, love it. <clears throat> so uh, we're we're going to be getting to to this in just a minute. Um, I'm going to end this in three, two, one. If you want to talk to Raphael, now's the time. And boom, twenty. You got twenty four people, Jonathan. That you're going to have to talk to apparently. All right, fantastic. <laughs> So we've been talking about understanding contracting officers. <clears throat> so I have a question for folks here today. And that is, how, if you think about having, building a relationship with somebody, how, first of all, how long does it usually take for you to do that? Sometimes it can happen like that. And sometimes it happens over years, right? So, but the question that I have <clears throat> is how much is one, one relationship work, worth? Hang on a second. I will find out one federal relationship. And there's there's a reason why the I split them up like this. Is it less than $10,000 or is it over? So it goes over a million, right? So a lot of times it's over a million, obviously, right? And I can change my glasses back because is it? <clears throat> so we're going to interrupt our, our program here. We're going to talk about finding buyers using the SAM.bit AMP system that Sally was talking about earlier. Because Because guess what? Every, all of us, all of us want this. We want the bottom line. We want the wins. Everybody's here because we want to win and we want to win more, right? If we're not here because we want to win, then you might as well just leave because we want to be winners. So they give us SAM.gov, right? And we've already talked a little bit about how challenging SAM.gov is. And that gives us opportunities. And that gave us the opportunity to be able to build SAM.bid. SAM.bid essentially on one side of the house does what SAM.gov should do. It's a custom monitoring tool for NAICS, PSCs, keywords so that you know first, you can review, you can propose, and that gets you to your wins. And we're gonna be talking about this exact thing, but, and, and that part is $89 a month, and that gets you to the 2%. And people are, there's other folks who were asking about getting to the two, the other 98%. I agree entirely. You need a path to get there because guess what? This side is the reactive side. And I love Greg because Greg does stuff that I don't like to do. I don't like paperwork. And I certainly mm -hmm. want, I want somebody that can help me go through a, a proposal and make it work. But our side of the house 
in, in marketing and sales. And I'm going to end this in, I'm going to end this poll so everybody can see. In three, two, one, anybody last stragglers of the 122? 36 participants. Oh my goodness, 36%, whatever. I don't know what happens to people. They must be in a coma. All right. So we need to get proactive. Everybody agree that proactive beats reactive every time? Oh. Look at this. One out of every five. Right? So five competitors, 76% of the time, it is awarded to one out of five. That's not hitting FBO. FBO. Sam.gov. So on my age again. This is all built on trust. And that trust comes from meaningful conversations, interaction, just like you do in meetings and understanding, learning how to, how to reach out to people. You need the exposure, you need to engage, you need to exhibit that you have the qualifications, they have to believe in you, and that you're the expert in your field. And guess what? That's what the SAM.bid with AMP system does, because it looks at the awards and you'd be like, why should I monitor awards? You're already telling me that I'm losing. Yep, you've been a loser, but you don't have to be losing anymore. You can use this as a tool to be able to get to the other components to get to your wins. It's $4.99 a month, but we're di that this to get you to the other 98%. But wait, Rafael Marrero, it's half price. It's $249 a month. It includes SAM.bid for the opportunities because we can monitor those and deliver those faster. But this gets you to the other the other 98%, and that's included, 100% of the coverage, 100%. You're going to see 100% of the awards as well as the opportunities, and you're going to know about them before anybody else does. You can go to sam.bid and click get started. You want to pick the one that's on the right-hand side, which is the one that's half price, and you can, you can do that. And I'm telling you, everybody that's using this, is this is a game changer for them, and it's five to 15 leads every week. So that means that if you let that run for about two months, three months, you will have a ton of folks that are playing in your space. And that was one of the questions of how you get to those folks, because you want to use this to your advantage for reaching out to contracting officers in their space, who they just awarded to, and go and reach out to them. And you also get a one to five year history report for every contact that's there. You'll be able to see all their activity, who they're buying from. You can even monitor your competitors on this system. It's the most powerful thing that you can do. Seven day free trial. You can go to that. And then now we're going to get to, to Greg Clark and talk about proposals that win back to our regularly scheduled program. Greg, tell us a little bit about DKA and how you got started. Well, as I said about 40 minutes ago, uh, <laughs> the three of us, three of us formed the company in 95 to help companies, uh, Put their proposals together for federal contracts and uh, about 15 years ago we also started doing GSA schedules so those are the two primary service areas that we fulfill and everything else we do is in support of those areas helping companies uh, uh, identify opportunities evaluate them and if it's a good fit for your experience and capabilities help you put your proposal together so you've been how long so how long you've been doing it 30 years we started this company in uh august of 95 and I've been doing it for a couple of years prior to that. Wowzers. All right. So let take us through this. So one of the things that you always say is you want to get to know fast. Why would you want to get to know fast? Well, to get to know fast means if you're not going to bid this, if there's something that's going to keep you from winning this contract, um, you want to identify that quickly. So you're not spending your time reading the solicitation for a contract you're not going to win. Yep. So if you're not going to win it, let's find out right away and ditch it and move on to the next one. So the the performance. So you take us through this piece where you have performance requirements. So that what does that mean? What are performance requirements? What are you saying? What's the contract to do? Is it are are, are we buying office equipment? Are you is it a is it a janitorial contract? What's the contract for? What what do you have to do? And can you do the work? Do you have the experience and capabilities to do what this contract is for? Then you want to look at the proposal requirements. Do they have minimum mandatory past performance requirements or um, certifications or, you know, what, what are, what are you required to submit and do you, are you able to provide all of that? And then you look at the evaluation criteria where they say, our award is going to be based upon this. It's going to be 50% uh, scoring for this, 20% scoring for this, 10% scoring for this. 
And then you start adding up and say, well, what's our score going to be? We have a pretty good score based upon what they're looking for. So from all three uh, uh, standpoints in that solicitation, your experience and capabilities line up with it perfectly. Well, now let's go see if we can, what we can find out. Is there a current contract? Who is that with? How long have they been on that contract? Does this come out every five years in the same company you've been winning it for 20 years? In which case, they're probably going to win it again. Or is this an 8A set aside? And we can find out this company is no longer 8A that graduated from the program. So somebody new is going to be in there. So whatever you can glean about the, the existing contract to add with your solicitation review, that goes into your go-no factor. Yep, yep. And you need to, that's, that's kind of where you are looking at. First of all, do a, past performance is huge, right? That, that's one of the biggest ways that they keep people out of the pool is, hey, you need five years of past performance or you need X amount of time of past performance relevant to their agency or relevant to that sub-agency. And you either have it or you don't, right? The past performance requirements can typically be where you can read between the lines in solicitation. Not the statement of work because that's part of the contract. That's, that's right. So they, they, they just, they lay it out flat there, the past performance requirements. If they want you to have three contracts, at least $3 million per, per year in value, um, in this state for this agency, well, that's probably only one company is going to have that. So yep. that would that's a that's an exclusive type of solicitation requirement, as opposed to them saying we don't care what what past performance you, you submit, submit whatever you've done. We just want to see that whatever you've done, you've made your 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 customer happy. We consider that very inclusive. They're open up. You know, that tells them that you know, they're they're not doing the incumbent any favors if they have that kind of past performance. And and to your point, you get to read between the lines and say, hey, we really don't like this incumbent very much because we'll take anybody else that has any performance, you know, to, but there there is, um, that's rare because it's better the devil you know in most instances for, for that. So, so and then then if you don't have the past performance, some of the, some of them actually allow for teaming, right? Yeah, and, and the, but then you have to see can I submit my subcontractor's past performance and are they weighted equally to that of the prime contractor? That I means just read all of those uh, and that'll tell you whether or not you should bid on a contract. Yep. And the, the objective again is get to know fast because if you're, if you're like, nope, 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 yes, then you can spend your time on what, what's going to make you money. Because no, no means you're going to learn no somewhere along the line, right? And if you spend a crap ton of time on your proposal and lose, that was going to no slow. <laughs> Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, yeah. You want to if, if you're not going to win the contract, do you want to yeah. find out after you submit your proposal and it gets evaluated, but, or but, before but, you start your proposal? But Greg, but Greg, I really, really, really want to do this work for the government. I talk oh. to a lot of people who really, really want a contract and they're <laughs> really, really don't have any chance of winning it. They want the contract, but that. they don't meet. The, yeah, they they want they they'd love to have the contract, but they don't have the minimum uh, mandatory. They don't meet the minimum mandatory requirements. That's right. So they're not gonna they're not gonna win it. They'd love to have it, but they're not. Gonna win it. And there is a secret for 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 that, and that is relationships matter. Mm -hmm. Right. If Sam? you could, if you don't, yeah, if, you, if two things, you can do marketing and get in front of and get in front of decision makers. Or you can work as a sub in a in, on a contract where you're interacting with the customer, and that's where you that's where you can develop the relationship. If you don't, if you're not capable of, of pursuing a project as a prime, see if you can get on as a sub in a role where you're interacting with the customer, and that now you have a relationship with that agency, and you can build yourself into a prime. Love it. So now you decided that hey, this is in my wheelhouse. We do have the past performance. We're part of the set aside that is saying they want. We can respond in time, and we know that the incumbent we can we we can punch the incumbent in the mouth, and we can take their money. And even if they have the ability to bid, we we're really strong against that particular incumbent. Now you're in yes, right? You're gonna bid. We we right? agreed. This is this is perfect for you. This is right in your wheelhouse. This this is this is it's perfect for you. Yep. All right. So now we now we get to the place. Now what do you do? Now well, it gets into the nuances of what you do every day. Right. And this is really, really important. So go ahead and tell, tell us what you do when a client comes to you and says, I want to bid this thing. I know we have all those things. They've already gotten to yes by the time you're talking to them. Okay. You hire, you, we've all agreed that you, that you have a good chance of winning this contract and you've hired us and we're going to start the process. The first thing we're, we're going to do is create a compliance matrix, which outlines everything that has to be addressed in the proposal. 
Yep. And um, from there, we're going to build the index, which is the order and the organization in which that information needs to be presented, i.e. the format. And from that, we will create a concise needs list of the content we need from you, our client. And that's your marching orders. So and you provide, I'm sorry, go ahead. That's okay, go ahead. So you, you provide that content. It may be, it may be you know, it's gonna be your past performance. It might be your technical approach to the job or, or, or whatever it is that, that has to come from you. Pricing uh, in most instances, provide that content to us and we use that content to um, develop the final draft, which we'll then send to you for you to review. And then you make any changes, additions, deletions to that draft until you, it, it needs your approval. And then we print it, copy it, put it in binders, box it up and ship it off to the agency and wait for their questions. So, so in, the, in this instance, I mean, and anybody that's doing this has gotta, they have to do this themselves too. So understanding what is it they're asking for so that you're compliant with the response, creating an index for yourself to say, this is the priority of things and this is who's gonna be developing these. And then the framework of saying, how do I fill this in, right? And one of, one of the things I love that you say, and with rare exception, there's only one exception that I have to this, and that is do not exclude any, do not include any extras. What do you mean by that? We, we've seen proposals from new clients. I'll say, well, this is one that I that we submitted and, and we didn't land in that. But yeah, I look at, read the solicitation and then I read the proposal and they're throwing in brochures and capability statements and this, you know, they paid, a, a company to do all this marketing materials and they're just filling up the proposal with stuff that wasn't requested and isn't an evaluation factor and it tells that agency that you don't know how to read a solicitation and that's and, real and, important and, it's, it's, yeah you, like, like Raphael said you got to look the part not just in your in your marketing um, and, and talking with the, these agencies but when you respond to their solicitation even if you don't win you want them to read that solicitation say you know what, this company had a lower price, but this is a company that's got their act together. This is a great proposal. They didn't have the lowest price, but this is a good proposal. And I, and I would be confident working with this company in time. And, and, and so it does come, to, sometimes it does come down to price. It's always, gonna it's, come, it's, all, it's always gonna be a major factor. Yeah, there's, there's, there's a factor for price, obviously. But if price <laughs> is an issue, the value is not clear, period. If you didn't build your value, you could have built, you may not have built your value up to that price. And that's a, that's universal, by the way. I didn't make that up. But if price is an issue, your value is not clear. And it could be that you missed something too in, in, in being able to do it, or somebody else can just do it better or faster or cheaper. Yeah, so and you, just, just kind of backing up a little bit, we're talking about you know what the process is with us. Typically, our client is, you're still writing the proposal. You know, there's stuff that we can't write. You don't want somebody else to write how you're going to do this because you're the That's expert right. in this industry. That's we're, right. we're not, and you don't want anybody else writing that. But it's it's that other 60% of the process of, of what's involved in preparing a proper federal con uh, proposal mm -hmm. that, you, that you don't have to do. You know, when you say, yes, let's go ahead and do that, we, we agree on terms, you go back to running your company. And then that needs list arrives maybe two days later, and then you pull that content together and send it over go back to running your, co your your company. And then that final draft appears maybe a week later and you remove that, make whatever changes to it. So you're you're still integrally involved in your yeah. proposal, but it's that other 60% of the, of the hours that, that go into doing it yourself that uh, you don't want to spend and you don't have to spend and allows you to continue to run your company without that, taking, it, taking, taking a month. And, and there's a reason why you've been doing what you're doing. So you have, they're, they're on the hook for the technical approach, which means m matching what they're asking for. What are you saying exactly here? You're asking me what, what, what the technical yeah, Match what, what they're asking, asking for. for. That's exactly what you're saying. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And so, and that means don't give them something that they're not asking for. To your point, don't give fluff. They can... Rafael Marrero, could you see fluff that didn't have any consequence to anything that you were bid that you wanted when you you knew Listen, fluff when you saw if, it, right? If I if I saw someone uh, scatting and bebopping across the room, <laughs> <laughs> they'd be out of there in a heartbeat. I mean, seriously. Uh, remember yeah, really. your name as a buyer. You're you know you have a responsibility to either the shareholders or in the case of government, the taxpayers, right? So if you if you onboard someone. Just because they sound good on paper, but they but they're not convincing, you're doing everyone a disservice, right? 
And yep. your job is, and credibility are going to be in, on the line. That's very, very important. And I want to say this. I mean, this is very, very important. So it's, you know, it's okay, right, to have the socioeconomic certifications and you're a veteran or you're a woman or 8A or whatever the case may be. You need to know what you're getting yourself into because there's something called vendor risk management, right? Mm -hmm. And this is at the crux of what supplier, supply, uh, that supplier, managers supply chain managers you know handle every day right yep. so you're this is going to impact your cpars rating right so if you if you fall flat on your face if you fail to deliver on time that's if worse you're not, if you're not capable of delivering a product on time on budget and as specified in that in that uh rfp or rfq you're you're done you can you, you might as well pack it a day and go to coney island right so you're done so i mean just just remember that all right Fantastic. We get, we're down to the last couple of minutes and, and we're going to run a couple of minutes over, but I do want to talk about pricing here because this is important, Greg. Yeah. So uh, the, 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 the philosophy that I uh, advise to, to all of our clients is that you look at this job and you determine what is the lowest price that you would be comfortable operating this contract at and then have the mindset that if someone's willing to do it for less, they can have it. Don't get into a guessing game of trying to figure out where do I need to be. Decide where you want to be, and because there there, there may be somebody that's going to be willing to do it for less, and, and don't be upset if they if they win it because they they would do, they, they want to do it for less because you don't want it for that price anyway. You You're don't. going to get into the problems that Raphael was just talking about. It's going to be yeah. difficult to operate successfully, and that's going to hinder your ability to be awarded future contracts. Yep. So ha have that mindset that I need to establish what I need to, how much I need to, to bid to cover my costs and my margins and, and be, be happy with this award. And I've so done that, that keep, in the past. So that you keep getting those awards. Yeah. And I, I, there's times in the past where I'm like, I'm not matching that price because you're asking for, you're asking for a problem. And uh, yeah, you get into those reverse auctions. Yep. And those, con those contracts go to the guy that's willing to do it for less than anybody else. And I don't know who wants to be that guy. I don't want to be that guy. And that's, that's where we want to get. It. So real quick, get to know fast, look like you belong on both sides, on the marketing side, as well as in your proposal. And if at first you don't succeed, what do you do, Greg Clark? You request a, a formal debriefing, either written or verbal. And you have you three go. days from the date that you're notified that you're not successful to submit that. Three days. So when, you're, if you, when you find out you're not successful, ask for it right away. So, Greg, that was awesome, man. As usual, you are the man when it comes to this stuff. So, Greg, if you need something from Greg, get a GSA schedule with a current proposal. Obviously, that would be very important if you have something in if there's something in the future. Get your past performance in order so that you look like the, look the part or something specific. And I got a couple of questions here that I'm going to get to because you can ask questions here. Doesn't DOD, Michael Clayton, love it, Michael. Doesn't DOD have a 90-day lag in reporting awards? So wouldn't it be difficult to track this information in your system? You're right, Michael, because I can't give you anything that you can't get already, right? It, it's, it's already the reporting mechanism. I can't make the DOD do it any faster. And it does create a problem for utilizing the system. You still know earlier, but you still 90 days in the rear. A lot of times, not always, but a lot of times in DOD. Great, great catch. Uh, Greg, Glenn Smiley, Greg, do you have to be in business? Do you have to be in business with government two years in order to get it on the GSA list? You're required to be in business at least two years. You're not required to have any government experience. Gotcha. And um, Alfred says, I have a bilateral IDC, which is indefinite delivery contract, for those of you who are new. With four releases issued, material on order at our manufacturer, however, the government is now asking a no cost cancellation on all releases without explanation. If no cause, oh, this is a legal question, Alfred. Um, Jason Moy, reach out to me, uh, D Low at ISI Federal, or may, put it in here and say, I need to talk to Jason Moy. That is a Jason Moy question. I'm gonna put that in there, Jason Moy. He is a lawyer. While you're typing that, I'm going to answer Gregory about Jim. He says, I see the contracts with a, with a short turnaround time of a week or two. Is this normal? And uh, are you able to help in this time frame? Dave and I were talking about it this morning. I'll get a, I'll get a call 
frequently saying, hey, there's looking at solicitation that's due next Friday. Can, we, can, you, can you help with that? Maybe, you know, if it was issued today and it's due next Friday, I see that as an opportunity because I think a lot of your competition is going to say, I'm not jumping through this hoop. Let's wait till the next one because they usually, they usually have a 30 day lead time. So I see that as an opportunity to, to get something done in that time frame, provided it's, we don't believe it's wired for the incumbent because that, that, could, that could also be the case. But if it's due next Friday and it was issued two months ago, I don't want to be involved in that at all because your competition's been working on it for two months and now we're going to slap something together in a week. And it's just going to make you look bad. That's not looking the part to, to, to do that. So it depends on the, on the situation. Uh, so Danny R is asking, could you touch on selling to law enforcement, police services and sheriffs? Most of what we're talking about is not in the local side of things. It would be police forces in the federal space. Um, what is your past performance, past experience, current capacity selling to this market segment, if any? We, if it's not federal, I don't have a lot of experience there. Um, we have, by kind of like osmosis, sold into that through through some of the COVID things. But other than that, we really haven't done a lot of work in that space in law enforcement. There's plenty of law enforcement and tactical gear and all that stuff in the Fed space. Not sure what you do. So there's also a conference coming up that speaks to that. So if you want to send me an email, I'll send you a link to the conference and maybe you can connect with some local law enforcement. Cool. Um, how do federal determine the COVID-19 rapid test purchase contract? Uh, plenty of small businesses that could give the contract, but they don't have, but who even don't, they give it to somebody who doesn't even have uh, the, the product and it's coming from China. Look, um, I, there's a lot revolving around the whole COVID thing. And obviously um, the access or saying that you have access to it or having the past performance of having access to it is probably how you got it. Uh, I want to know if a high tech R&D company can get the funding support. The answer is yes, Sharon. There's a lot of ways that you can do that. Um, what, SBIR contracts, right, right, Sally? That's absolutely correct. Yep. <clears throat> uh, and there's other ways to get R&D R &D funding. Yeah, there's a 900, and we'll be talking about this on the infrastructure plan, but there's about $900 billion in government grants from cyber grants oh. to unsolicited proposals. So it's this whole amazing... Yep. world and the key is if you have an innovative technology an agile innovative technology that you want to bring forward so it's, it's a really cool opportunity for funding yep yep and gregory's asking i understand that the government asked for a discount after is this true if so don't i need to build that into my price if you're doing a gsa contract you cannot go above that price i always say go in high and that way if they want to click and buy from you you make money you make crazy money but make sure Whatever you can support at the highest level, put it in high. If you go low, you can't go any higher without making an economic price adjustment, right, Greg Clark? Yeah. So I don't know if he's asking about when you're applying. You have to. You have to, the government's going to ask for discount. Yes. So you you're required to submit your most favored customer pricing. Yep. So you're going to submit your invoice. You're showing this what you charge for for your offerings, and they're going to say, okay, this is the price that now we'd like to we we for it to be your GSA price. We're going to discount it. A little bit and you're going to negotiate that to what you agree to and then move forward if you're talking about bidding no once you bid and you're awarded the contract they're not going to ask you for a discount after your your bid was your bid and that's what's awarded based upon they could come at back for best and final yeah they could do that you're welcome alfred <laughs> um how do you check C your cpars rating um you you contact your contracting officer and contact you have a login for cpars you have your own is there a threat, a $250,000 threshold to ask for a debrief? There's a $250,000 threshold for them to grant you a, a, a debrief. However, you can always ask. And I always do. All right, I'm going to end this poll for Greg. 13 people you got to talk to, Greg. And then we're going to, hey, Peter, I'm going to have to pa bypass you for this time, but tell them real quick that you do federal funding for contracts and you can help them with, a, with the front end, right? Yeah, give us a call. We'll uh, we can issue a financial support letter to to support your bid in uh, bidding on contracts, and also we'll lend you your opportunity if you're a brand new company, you don't have that historical data, you haven't been in business for two years. We will finance that opportunity. And for all our veteran friends, we are going to be at the Veterans Conference in Orlando, nice. May 17th through the 20th, having a booth. 
and we've been asked to be a presenter on financing federal government contracts. Fantastic. So hope to see our veteran friends there on the 17th through the 20th, May in Orlando. That's fantastic. That's awesome. Put it in the chat, speaking of the chat. So I'm gonna rip through this real quick. For, for understanding your contracting officer. We talked about that. Everything revolves around being able to meet it for the contracting officer and do your technical proposal, right? That resonates with the technical people, right, Greg? Yep. All of those. I'm gonna do this real quick, just to, as a high level overview. I'm not gonna spend too much time. The other component of, of it, so we did the SAM.bid, which was the system that monitors it every day and gives you piecemeal. Some folks can't wait for that. Because if you take a look at some of this, you look at the, it's 42 billion, almost $43 billion market, right? And take a look at the contracts, 160,000 contracts made up that $43 billion. Average value is 268,000. And these four, these, these 5,000 companies, look at this, one $43 billion. And guess what? These 7,000 people, awarded $43 billion. That's the value of the intelligence that you were talking about, Sally, being able to say, hey, who are the people that are playing in our pool? These are the people that are playing in your pool. These are the buyers that you need to get to. And, and that's where- you want to be helping them write the RFPs and RFIs. You got that right. And fulfilling what they need from a socioeconomic standpoint, minimizing the competition on your side. 80% of new contracts will be awarded July through September, they're going to execute those contracts. They may not be delivered until halfway through 2023, but they're going to award them by September. Why is that, Sally White? Because that's when the fiscal year ends for the That's government. right. That is correct. And, and they've been dragging why, their feet all year. What's that? And they've been dragging their feet all year. All year. They've been year. The, even, even worse this year than some other years. So that's why you need to get to these people. And you can't, you can't wait. Because if you're waiting, you're already behind. These people are already awarding it. They already have relationships that you have to get to. So that what we want to do, find the buyers in your market, get your competitor, get your competitors buyers. Nothing better than being able to say that guy's buying from a competitor, go punch a competitor in the mouth and steal their business. Shark them, shark them. Shark them, that's right. And all this is ranked by activity so that you have a priority of who you can go out after. All right, so I'm going to ask this one more question, then we'll get you closed out of this joint. I promise. How do you want to reach buyers? Do you want to reach them with a Q3 marketing push? Do you want to reach them daily with a steady plan or need a complete strategy? And then we'll get to the last of the questions. Do we have any more questions? I know we're running over. I promise I'm going to do this better next time. We just don't, we want to make sure everybody gets the, the value out of this. I think we've got everything. All right, $1.5 trillion, we're in Q3. If you want to win, you better start getting out there, getting in front of people. We got Dr. Rafael Marrero. You can reach out to Jonathan at rafaelmarrero.com. We got Greg Clark at gclark at dkahome.com. And you can reach out to Sally White at sally at echowolf.solutions. What a great, what a great uh, your URL. Sally, Echo Wolf Thank Solutions, you. love it. Thank you. And Peter Tim is Peter at tfnlending.com. Wow, he has a QR code in there. That's, that's right, he has a QR code. So if you, you, you can hover over your phone really I'll, quick, super quick. I get want your one iPhone. of those. This is really, like, how cool is this, Peter? I want one of those. So everybody I got to get one of those. One. So turn on your camera. You don't have to do anything. Hover over the code. This is so cool. And you click on it, and it goes right to Peter's page. Right yeah. to Peter. Yeah, I, I can't it. take credit for that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, acquisitionhelp.com, if you want, to, want some help from the inside. May briefings, we have Jason Moy. We have CPARS training. Sam.bit is live, and you get a seven-day trial. He, he, a quick fuse if you're monitoring GSA. And you can find us on YouTube and LinkedIn, as always. Next month, Sally, you're on the hot seat. You'll Yay. be talking about networking. That's right. How we can and there you have it. Yeah. And my updated cap my, my updated capabilities photo should say. <laughs> Super there quick you if you want to capture the chat. Lots of rich discussions. Contact. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell them There's how to a, do that, Sally. There's three little circles, three little dots to the right of your smiley face. You click on the dots, click on save chat, then it says show in folder. 
and your chat shows in the fol shows in the folder, and you can have the chat of everyone. If in the unlikely event you haven't done this before, Dave shuts us down. I'm going to put my information, and I'll send it to you. Love it. All right, guys. So if you if you ask for anything for follow up, you get a follow up from my team. Um, I didn't mean to do that. And uh, otherwise, always as always, doctor, the doctor, blue glasses on for the doctor. Thank you, sir. And we uh, we appreciate you, Sally. Thank you very much. Great, great job. Thank you. And uh, Peter, great job. Thanks for sticking Thank around. I promise we'll get you get you talking about some of the the contracting awards and funding, not too distant future. We appreciate you guys. Um, and I will see you. I have all kind of news for the next time we have a, a conversation. But be watching uh, Gov Brief for for the infrastructure as well. All right, guys. See you. See you later. <laughs>